In this video, we're going to talk about Bronsted, Lowry, Acids, and Bases. Some of this information is going to be review from general chemistry, but then we're going to add some organic twist to it as well. In this video, we're going to talk about Bronsted, Lowry, Acids, and Bases. Some of this information is going to be review from general chemistry, uh, but then we're also going to add some organic twists to it as well. So, from Gen Chem, we learned the definition of Bronsted, Lowry, Acids, and Bases. And we learned that acids are proton donors, and bases are proton acceptors. So if I look at this example down here, I have hydrochloric acid and water, and hydrochloric acid being acid is gonna donate or give that proton to the water. And what we end up with, right, because it gives up the H plus, what's left with is Cl minus, and then because the water is gaining an H plus, it becomes H3O plus. Uh, now the products, uh, we can also give names, Right, and so the acid is kind of paired with the conjugate base. And the base, I sort of think of it as becoming the conjugate acid. And the reason we call this the conjugate base is because if we imagine the reaction running in the other direction, right, then in that case, right, if this reaction ran backwards, then the H3O plus would be donating the H plus to the HCl. And so going in the opposite direction, this is gonna act like a base and this would act like an acid. All right, and so uh, we've kind of already talked about this, right? The base turns into a conjugate acid in the products, and the acid, I sort of think of it as turning into the conjugate base. And so what we want to do is practice labeling the acid, the base, and the conjugates in this reaction. And so I've got to see, right, I'm looking at where is the proton going, right? And so I'm starting out with this water, and then it becomes OH minus, right? So this is losing an H plus. Right, so this, if it's losing it, it must be donating it, so that must be the acid, right? That means this guy's probably the base, but I can check, right? When I compare this compound to this one, right? It's gained an H, right? So this thing accepted a proton to turn into this, so this must be my base, right? And so the pair of the acid is the conjugate base, and the pair of the base is the conjugate acid. Now, the new thing that we're going to do uh, with bronsted Lowry acids and bases is we're going to draw mechanisms for these, and we're going to show how the electrons are moving in the reaction. And so we can kind of think about these acid-base reactions is the base, which is always going to have a lone pair, is stealing the H plus from the acid. And so we're showing what the electrons are doing, right? And so this lone pair is going to steal that hydrogen, and then the bond that was formed between the hydrogen and the A here, right, that's going to become a lone pair on the conjugate base. Now, these should look similar to the curved arrows that we used uh, when we were drawing resonance structures. The big difference is in resonance structures, right, the different resonance structures don't really exist. So that electrons aren't actually moving. The actual uh, electronic structure of that compound is a combination of all the resonance hybrids. When we draw these mechanisms, and these acid-base reactions are the first example of many mechanisms that we're going to do, right, this does represent a physical change, right? In these reactions, it's showing how the flow of electrons uh, occurs in the mechanism of the reaction. All right, so here we have another example. Uh, right, these are all very similar. I've got my base and my acid, and what's always going to happen in these acid-base mechanisms is that a lone pair on the base is going to attack or steal the hydrogen, and then the bond that was attaching the hydrogen, in this case to the oxygen, right, that's going to become another lone pair uh, on the thing that's losing the hydrogen. And then we've also got to be aware of charges, right? The This OH minus, right, it was negative, right, but it's gaining an H plus. Not just an H, it's gaining an H plus. So it's going from negative to neutral, and then this thing was neutral, right? But it's not just losing an H, it's losing an H plus. So it went from neutral to being negative. 
And I guess we should point out, right, when we do when we draw a mechanism and we're drawing sort of two hours in one step, we're saying that these steps are happening simultaneously. So this is a concerted mechanism. All right, so let's do a couple uh, practice problems to end this video. So the first thing we do is we want to draw the conjugate base of each of the following, right? So if we're if we're looking for the conjugate base, that means we're saying these things are acting like acids. And so I've so if they're acids, they're proton donors. So I need to take an H plus away from them, and I got to decide which H plus to lose. Well, uh, in this first one, I think it's pretty easy, right? This is a carboxylic acid, right? And so this is my acidic proton, and so this is the one that we're going to lose. And so my conjugate base, right? And if I have right this thing originally had two lone pairs. When it loses the H, right, it's going to gain an additional lone pair. And it didn't just lose an H, it lost an H plus. So that oxygen is going to have a negative formal charge. All right, now, when we look at this guy, we've got to decide, uh, you know, I think the, the carboxylic acid is easy, right? When we see this functional group, we know that, that, that this is the acidic proton. When I look at this guy, it may not be as obvious what the acidic proton is going to be. Now, this carbon doesn't have any hydrogens, right? It's already got four bonds, so no hydrogens here. So we're either going to lose a hydrogen from one of these guys, one of these two, or this one. And the one that's most acidic is this one. And the reason being, uh, what you're going to see when I draw removing that hydrogen, right, so this guy's got two hydrogens, when I take away one of these H pluses, and then this bond becomes a lone pair on here, I can actually form, a, or this lone pair is going to be resonance stabilized because it's next to the double bond here uh, on the oxygen. And so if I make that guy, I can draw the resonance structure, right, so we can go here and here, and so we get resonance stabilization by taking this proton. If we try to take one of these protons, right, we're not going to get we're not going to be able to draw any resonance structures, and so this should be the most acidic proton, or this one, uh, because uh, the conjugate base is resonance stabilized. All right, now we want to draw the conjugate acid of each of these guys, right? And so if we're looking for the conjugate acid, then that means that these things are acting like bases, and bases are proton acceptors. So to find the conjugate acid of a base, I need to add protons. And in this first case, I think the only place, right, in order to be a base, it's got to have lone pairs, right, because a lone pair is going to attack the proton uh, on the acid. So, right, none of these carbons have lone pairs. So the only option, right, is for one of those lone pairs on that OH to attack uh, the hydrogen from the acid. And so we're going to add the uh, H plus to that oxygen. And so my conjugate acid will still have one lone pair, right? And we added an H plus, so that oxygen now has a positive formal charge. When I look at this guy, uh, the sodium is just a counter a counter ion, right? So what I'm really interested in is NH2 minus, um, and so. The nitrogen has two bonds, so it must have two lone pairs. And so uh, if this is the base, right, when it adds an H+, plus, we're going to end up with NH3 with lone, one lone pair as the conjugate acid. All right, uh, last thing I have are two more examples. We're going to draw some... Uh, mechanisms, and then we're going to label the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. Um, now, uh, I followed the convention that the book 
uses on these problems, and they don't put lone pairs on these things. But I think when we draw mechanisms, uh, I mean, for sure, for the, for the ones where the lone pairs are involved in the mechanism, we need to draw those. But uh, for all the centers uh, where we've got relevant things going on, I would put the lone pairs on. So I'd fill this in. He should have two lone pairs. Here I've got a positive oxygen. He should have one lone pair. Another positive oxygen. Should have one lone pair. Here's water. We know he has two lone pairs. So I think it's probably easier to identify the acid and the base before we draw the mechanism. And so I think, right, we're going from H3O plus to water, right? So this guy is losing a proton, so he must be a proton donor. So this is my acid, and his pair is the conjugate base, right? And this guy, when I go from here to here, he's adding a proton, so he this thing is accepting a proton. So this is my base, this is the conjugate acid, and so the lone pair on the base is going to attack the proton from the acid. So lone pair from the base attacks the proton on the acid, and then this guy is going to become a lone pair on the oxygen. And so that would be my mechanism. All right, one more example, same type of thing. So I need to identify what's the acid and what's the base. And I can already see a problem, uh, a typo on my notes here. This should be a hydrogen on that nitrogen. Uh, and so that was just a mistake. That should have been in there to begin with. Um, so what I'm comparing here is right. I've got this guy is turning into this. Right, so this, when I go from here to here, is adding a proton, right? So this must be a proton acceptor. So this is my base. When I look at this compound, right, I'm going from here to having a negative charge. So that carbon is actually going to have a, uh, a lone pair. So this thing lost a proton, so it's a proton donor. So this is my acid. So then this must be my conjugate base, and this must be my conjugate acid. And so I th in this case, I think it would help to fill in what's not being shown here, right? So they're not showing us the hydrogens on this guy. So let's put those guys on there. And then they're also not showing us the lone pairs on this nitrogen, right? We know if carbon has a negative formal charge, that means uh, it must have a lone pair and it's got two hydrogens, and then this neutral nitrogen must have one lone pair, right? So what always happens is the lone pairs on the base are going to attack the proton on the acid. So these guys will attack one of the protons, and then this bond becomes the lone pair that's going to end up on that carbon. 